begin today the Gemara on the Avkuf Samach Zayin, three lines down from the top of the Yomit. Omer Abaya, Abaya said, Hai man the boy lo mechvi chsimis yadeh bevei dina. Someone that wants to show his signature in Bezden. As Rajbami explains, there is sometimes where the only way you're able to verify the person's signature is by him signing and Bezden using his signature to compare to the signature that they have in a document. It, usually, the person himself is here. He can just come and tell us, testify that this is his signature. But the Rashbami brings from the Gemara in Subis, there is a case where if the two Edim on the Shtar, one of them passed away, so then you can't be Mekai on the Shtar with him telling us that this is his signature, because then it's going to end up being that if he, together with someone else, testifies on his signature and on the other signature of the other Edim passed away, so you have over here these two Edim that are testifying on, th- on two-thirds of the star. When Edim testify, they have to testify half and half, and half 50, 50, 50-50 for the validity of the star. So in such a case, it's necessary for this aid to first write his signature down so Bezna can verify one signature. And then Bezna already verified that. Now he, with another aid, can come and verify the other signature. That's, that's the case when this is necessary. So, be it as it may, the point is that he's writing down his signature on a, on a document. Where, where should he write it on the piece of paper? He should not write his signature at the end of the paper. Because what, happened, what could happen then? Maybe someone else may find this paper with his signature on it. And the Kosav, and then he's going to write on it above the signature, Damasik Bezuzi, that this person owes you money. And you have a document with this person's signature on the bottom. And a Tunan, we learned in the Mishnah, olov ksav If you take out someone's uh, signature, ksav here means a signature, loy, that he owes you this amount of money, it says that, that, I, that I owe you $1,000 and it has a signature on the bottom. So such a kind of document does not have a halacha of a star because it doesn't have the signatures of two witnesses, but it is something that could be used as proof to collect the loan from this individual from the properties that he still has in his possession. So therefore you have to be careful with this. So in connection to this, the Gemara brings an actual story that happened. Hahu Bazvina, there was this tax collector, and he was a Yid, the Osala Kameda Abaye. So he came to Abaye and he said to him, Omale, he says to Abaye, Nechsi Limar Chasimis Yode. Why don't you write for me your signature? And what would be the purpose? The Chi Osura Bonon when the, your students, the Rabbanon, would come to me and machvuli, and they're going to show me your signature that you signed for them, that you don't want me to collect tax from them, then mavarna luhu, I will forgive them the tax as long as they have your signature. But I need to know that it's, uh, it's really uh, your accurate signature. So I, I, I need to be able to recognize the signature. So mavarna luhu I'll let them go through. I won't collect tax from them. So achvilei bereish megilte. So Abaye wanted to write his signature, like he himself said before, on the top of the page. So it shouldn't be written on the bottom now, then you can write on top whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Now, have a kanogit bay. This tax collector, as Abaye is trying to sign the document, he pulls the paper <laughs> that Abaye should sign further down on the page. <laughs> and there'll be empty space above his signature. Oh, Malay, Abaye said to him, ah, you think you're uh, going to outsmart me with this? Kvar kadmucha rabbonon. The rabbonon already before you figured out that this could be done, and they warned us that you only write in the top of the page. Omar Abaye, another thing Abaye said about writing in a document to be careful for a forgery, mitlas va'ad eser, if you're writing in a document, the numbers from three till 10, then le'lichtoiv b'soiv shitta. Don't write this number at the end of a line, when there's no word afterwards, because dilma mezayev v'kosav, because then you can forge and add to it from the number three till the number 10. For example, if you write shalosh, what, what could a person do if it's in the end of the line? He just adds a yud and a mem, so that becomes shloshim. It's 30. And the same all the way till eser, all the words can be added and changed. Eser could become esrim. So it's like in a check. When you write, you have to make a line afterwards, so, or zero, zero, whatever, that you shouldn't add anything to it. So over here as well, but for, before Shalish, it's not a problem because you write Sela or Slayim. Over there, you don't even necessarily write a number. And after Eser, if you write Achad Osar, so if you'd want to change Achad Osar, so what would you have to do? You, you, you would have to write Echad Esrim. Echad Esrim is not going to work. You have to write Echad Ve Esrim. That's how you write. You have to add a Vav there. So if you have to add a Vav there, you're going to see that the Vav was squeezed in in between, and it's going to be noticeable that it was a forgery.
Another point that Rishayim say is, this is all a concern if you're writing Shalosh. Shalosh could turn into Shloshim. But if you're writing Shloisha, which is actually Lashon Zachar, you write Shloisha with a hay at the end, so then once that hay is there, so then you can't add anymore and it's no problem. So the Gemara says, V'i Yisra if you end up writing the word Shalosh or any of the other numbers here from 3 to 10 at the end of a line, so what should you do? Nahadre le dibure train tlosazimne. So then write the number in the in the document two or three times. And he asked the Misrami le bem So if you're going to repeat this number of the amount in this star a few times, it's going to have to come out that that number is going to be somewhere in the middle of a line when there's a word afterwards and you can't add any letters to it. So the Gemara brings us a few stories that happened in connection to this, this kind of forgery. Ahu da have There was a star that it was written in it. Tilsa bipardesa. That what was sold was a third of an orchard. Now, Ozal, what did the buyer go and do? Machke, he went and he raised legage de beis vikare. The beis that there is in the, in the word of bipardesa. So that beis, he raised most of the top line of the beis, which is called here the gag, the roof of the beis. And kare, and the bottom line of the beis, he raised, he raised completely. And Vishavye, and instead, what was written now in the star? Upardesa. That you sold me a third, a third of something else, a third of a garden, and this entire orchard. So also came to Abaye, so came to Abaye, and the, the seller complained that this person forged a document here. On Malay, so Abaye looks at the star, and he, was, he noticed that by the word Bipardesa, which not, was written Upardesa, that there was space there. Because if it was first the base and now it's above, so the base is wider. So there was now space there. And so he asks him, My time at Why is there so much space here between the Vav and the, the pay of Pardesa? Uh, this Vav has too much space here. Kafse, Abaye, strapped him, he tied him to a pole to, to, to hit him, and Vaidi. And the person admitted that he erased the base and he turned it into a Vav. So it's interesting, somebody showing him actually say that in such a case, he's allowed to, uh, he's allowed to give him makis in order for, to get him to admit. Other Rishayim say he's not allowed. He's, he's, he's allowed to strap him in order to, to uh, force him to admit, but he's not allowed to actually hit him. Another story similar, there was a star that it was written in it, that menas Ruven v'shimen achi, that the property of Ruven and Shimon, the brothers, is sold. So Havalahu Ache, they actually had a third brother, the Shmei Achi. And the name of the third brother was Achi. So now this buyer, what did he do? Asal, he went and Kosov Bey, he wrote, he added into the star Vov. He added into the star a letter Vov. And now Vishavye Veachi. So he turned it into Menas Ruven Vishimin Veachi. That it's a property of all three brothers, including the brother of Achi. <coughs> Also, like I made Abaye, so now they came to Abaye. So Abaye looked into the star and he noticed that there's a vav that was squeezed in here. On Malay, so he said to the buyer, "My time at Dochakle Al Malahai Vav Kulahai. Why is this vav so uh, little space here and squeezed into the between after Shimon and Achi? There's a vav here that's squeezed in. Kafse again, he tied him and he admitted that he added that vav there. Hahushtare, <laughs> another case of a of a uh, forgery that a person tried to do. There was a document. They have a chasam ale rove verav ache barada. The signatures on this star was of the two great amiroim, rove and rav ache barada. So this person went, as we'll see here, and forged their, their signatures, and he couldn't choose anybody else besides these great amiroim, rove and rav ache barada. I guess he thought that if you have such signatures, then uh, everybody will accept it. Now, also, it came made rove. It came in front of rove. Amalei and Rava looked at the signature and said, This is actually my signature. He, this is it. Miu, however, I never signed my name before Ravacha Barada. Ravacha Barada was older, he was senior to Rava. So he says, It doesn't make sense. I couldn't have signed this document. I would never sign my name before Ravacha Barada. Mm. So Kofse, he tied him, and he admitted that he forged his signature. So here, this is a forgery where he actually did a very good forgery. The Rava said, This is actually my signature. Now, Omalei, after this, Rava asked this uh, person, Bishloi Mididi Zaytis. Okay, my signature, I understand you were able to forge it, it's not so difficult. Ela de Ravacha Barade, however, the signature of Ravacha Barade, the Rosis Yode, so he was already older and his hand was shaking. Hey, Chiyavdis, how are you able to make such a kind of forgery with his shaking hand? So Omar, he said two things that he did. So some say he said, Anchi Yadoi Ametzre. I put my hand. When you have this, uh, in those times, a footbridge, 
they would, and that had a rope that they would hold on to when they would cross this bridge. So that rope is shaking. So I stood over there in that place, put my hand on this rope that shakes, and that's how I signed with a, with a hand that was shaking. So I got this kind of signature. Kids said this person was an expert. Va'amirillah, others say, Kam azarnuka v'kasav. He stood on some kind of a um, pail or some kind of a, a bucket to, to, to draw water with it. And he was, he was, he was uh, wobbling and he wasn't uh, in a sturdy place. And therefore, over here, he was able to write and sign with, with this shaking uh, thing, with this shaking hand, similar to Ravach Barada. This, is, this, this Gemara is brought up in some places, usually, regarding a document. Once you verify the validity of the signatures, we're not concerned for such a thing that the Gemara describes here. Right? So that the, the, the signatures are actually forgeries, that the person copied the signature. Usually we're not concerned. But there are cases, based on this Gemara, where we are concerned. When you have a star, for example, that's lost and then it's found, so over here, there is a bigger chashash that it was forged, and that's why it was lost. The person doesn't usually use important documents, but by a star that's lost, we're concerned for such a kind of forgery, like the Gemara describes it here. We write, sorry. Kaisvin get ish. We write a get, a get for a man. Here we're talking about a get, a divorce. Even if his wife is not with him. And uh, the reason for this is that you, you don't need the consent of the wife for the get. It's the husband that writes it and it's all up to him. And therefore you write it for him even if his wife is not with him. And you write a receipt for receiving the payment of the ksuba money. So you write that for the woman, even if the husband is not with her, because this is something that is only for the benefit of the husband. Even if he's not there, he doesn't mind if you write that receipt. Now, he had, now there'll be a proof that he already paid his, uh, the ksuba for his wife. All right, so this, this woman, if she did not receive her ksuba yet, she has to hold on to that receipt until she actually gets the payment of her ksuba, and then she'll give it to her husband. As long as the, the Adim that are writing this get or they're writing this receipt, they should know, they should recognize who the husband is and who the wife is, then you, they can write it. As the Gemara will explain. Okay, here in Taisvis and the Rishainim, there's a discussion regarding both of these cases why we wouldn't be concerned for a knunya. Knunya means when there's some kind of foul play here, when you're writing a get in advance. This could be utilized in a case where there was a property sold from the woman's properties and you can then you could try to show that she was already divorced before that sale. And similar regarding a receipt. If this woman sold her ksuba and now she, she wrote a receipt with her earlier date and the husband would go and use this receipt to say, oh, it was sold to you, but look, I paid the ksuba even before the date that it was sold and really it wasn't. There's all kinds of problems that can come out from writing a, a get or a ksuba. When the, when the wife is not there, when the husband is not there, and you're using it before the date. Okay, so Taisus discusses this over here. The Shainim. Okay, now, Vahabal, another case, the husband, Naisen Schar. The husband in both of these cases, he's the one that has to pay for the writing of the get and for the writing of the receipt. For the writing of the receipt, it's obvious that he, he's the one that has to pay because it's for his benefit to have a receipt that he uh, paid the ksuba. By the get, also, the Gemara will explain it's the husband that pays for the get. You can write a document for a loyve, for a borrower, even if the malve is not with him, the lender is not there and he didn't borrow the money yet. But they ain't case for the malve, but you can't write a star for a lender, unless the borrower is there with him. So there again, regarding this case, there's also a, a discussion in the Rishanim and the Gemara that talks about this in Bob Metzia. You write a document and you put it into it a date. That, and the loan didn't take place yet, so then in the end, this could be a problem for collecting from the properties of buyers that bought in this time before the loan happened. Okay, the Gemara discusses this in Bab Metziah. When you're writing a document of a loan, who's the one that pays for it? The one, that's the one that gets the benefit, which is the borrower. You can write a document for a sale, you write it for the seller, even if the buyer is not uh, here. And this is, so this is something that the buyer is more than happy, that you're writing that this property is being sold in him, for, to him, even if he's not there. You don't write a document for the buyer, unless the seller is there and is agreeing to sell. In this case, the benefit of uh, the star is the buyer, so he's the one that pays for it. 
Ein kaisvin shtari, edison and nesuin. You don't write a document for edison, the first stage of marriage, which is, uh, I think, what basically we refer to, to today as the tnoyim, where you write what the father of the kala is giving, what the father of the chasana is giving to, for the chasana and everything else that's needed. That's the shtar edison. And the nesuin, the shtar nesuin is the ksuba. Elo midar shneyen. Only when they're both there. <coughs> together. The chasen is the one that has the main benefit of all of this, and therefore he's the one that uh, pays for the writing of both the Shtar Edison and the Suan. Ein kaisven shtar arisos v'kablonos. You don't write a document for arisos. These are various kinds of workers. Arisos is a worker, a sharecropper that gets a certain percent of uh, what uh, he's doing in the work in the field. And kablonos is also a worker that gets a certain set amount paid for his work. Ela midas shneem. Unless they both agree. They have to both be there to, to agree to the terms of the agreement. And therefore you only write when they're there together. The one that's getting the benefit, which is the worker being hired here, he's the one that has to pay for the, for the document being written. You don't write the Shtare Birurin, which the Gemara will describe what this is, and the Chol Maise Bezdin, or anything else that the Bezdin is uh, coming to Paskin regarding a certain uh, Din Taira, Ela Midas unless both parties of the Din Taira are there. Ushneem Neisen they're both benefiting here from this Shtar, and therefore they both pay for this document that Bezdin writes. Rabshem Gamliel says that Lishneem uh, Kaisvin, that you're going to write two documents here when there's a psak din. You have to write one for this party in the din taira and one for the other. So the Adam are going to write two different shtaras for each one of them. Okay, the Gemara will talk about that also. We'll see. The Gemara will explain it, whether the Rabshim Gamliel is arguing. We'll see. Okay. So, the Gemara, Mai Ubulvach Yehe Makiron. What does it mean, going back to the mission in the beginning, where it said that if you're writing a get, you can write it for the husband, even if the wife is not there, and you can write a receipt for the wife, even if the husband is not there. As long as the Adam that are writing and signing this star or this get, they know, they, they know who the husband is, who the, who the wife is. So what does this mean? That you have to know who is this man that you're writing the get for, who is he? So that otherwise, if you don't know who this man is, so then this person can go and take this get and give it to someone else that has the same name as him, and he's going to go and use it and uh, to, to divorce his wife. And b'shem isha b'shoiver. And you have to know who is this woman that you're writing the receipt for, because if you're writing it for this woman and this woman can give it to someone else with this name, that will use it. Well, you have to know the, the name of the man by the get and the name of the woman by the, the receipt. These three Amiram were sitting together. The Yosef Abaye Gabayu and Abaye was sitting amongst them. The Yosvi Vukami Bayuluhu and they were sitting and they were questioning this. Shema ish beget in. According to what we just said, does that mean that when you, when you sign a get, do, do the Adam only have to know who this man is, his name? Shema Isha Loi, but who his wife is? That they don't have to know. Shema Isha Bishoivir in or the name of the woman that they're writing the receipt of this, re to receive the payment of the ksuba. So they have to know the name of the woman in, Shema Ish Loi, but the name of the husband, the man, that they don't have to know. Why not? Velechesh, why wouldn't we be concerned? Dilme Kosav Gita, maybe the get was written, and and then he gives it to someone else, and someone else is going to give it to a different woman. How can you say that the Edim don't have to know who the woman is as well, if then the get could be given to someone else? And also regarding the receipt, the Zimnin Ozla Kosve Isha Shaiver, a woman's gonna write a receipt, and the Yava Lagavra de Lav Delay, and she's gonna give it to a man <coughs> that's not her husband, and then someone else is gonna go and claim that he already paid the ksuba for his wife when this receipt was written for someone else. So you should have to really know both by the get and by the receipt, you should have to know both who the man and the woman are. So Amalu Abaye, so Abaye clarified to them that Hachi Amar Rav, this is really what Rav said. Shame ha'ish beget that you have to know the, who the man is when you're writing a get and v'hu adin l'shem ha'isha and you also have to know who the woman is. Shame ha'isha b'shaver you're writing the the uh, receipt for the woman so you have to know who she is but v'hu adin l'shem ha'isha you also have to know who the man is in order to be sure that she's not giving this receipt to someone else. In fact, the Gemara. 
Again, what? Why didn't she want to do that? You Why what? Maybe she uh, doesn't need it, Pachla. Maybe she already got her. Get. She doesn't need that proof, and she's just trying to help out her friend or try to help out her friend's husband. Actually, she's helping out this man. I don't know. There's a kind of a zeal here. If we're concerned over here of people switching a get, get written for one couple that can be used for a different couple. Now, why wouldn't we be concerned? How about if you have two people that have the same name, Yosef ben Shimon, that are living in the same city, that Dilma Kosev Gitte, maybe the get was written for one person, and the and then it's going to be given, he's giving this get to, not his wife, he's giving it to another person that has a wife with the same name like him, and he, he, he's now on someone, else, someone else's wife is going to come and present the get that I got divorced from my husband, and really, she never got the get from her husband that has the name Yosef ben Shimon, she got her get from a different husband that has the name Yosef ben Shimon. So why aren't we concerned for this? Okay, so here there's a big discussion in Taisvis, exactly how and when we're concerned for such a thing. <laughs> If it's a city that we don't know of any two Yosef ben Shimons that are married to, let's say, Rivka, so there's really no reason to be concerned. It's, it's just, <coughs> there's a, just one Yosef ben Shimon over here in the city. If it's a city where there is actually two Yosef ben Shimons with uh, a wife with the same name, so in such a case, this will really depend <coughs> on what we learned from Masech de Gittin, according to the Meir, or according to the Belazar. The Gemara there says that according to the Meir, in such a case, because there are two people that have the same names in the city, you have to write into the get. For example, you're going to have to write into the get, Yosef ben Shimon ben Yaakov as opposed to the other person, which is Yosef ben Shimon ben Yitzchak. So that it should be clear in the get who it is. According to Rabbi Meir, at least according to Taisus' opinion, it has to be clear in the get itself. So if that's the case, it's not going to be confused with anybody else. On the other hand, Taisus says, Rabbi Lazar, if you remember, Rabbi Lazar holds Ede Mesirikarti. The main thing by a get is not the signatures inside the get. The main thing of the get is the sign- is, is, sorry, is the Edim that are there when you hand over the get. So how is there a concern that this man may go and give the get to someone else's wife that has the same name as him and has the same, well, the wife and husband have the same name. If there is a Mesira, they see the husband giving the get to his wife. So Taisa says it must be that it's a case where you have people with the same name. And it's according to Rabbi Lazar, where it's, you're not writing into the get, Yosef, Ben Shimon, Ben Yitzchak, or Ben Yaakov. But nevertheless, when Adim see this, the Adim are seeing that the person by the name of Yosef Ben Shimon is giving a get to someone. They're not, they don't really know these people. They're not, it's a big city. They don't necessarily know who this person is. They see that there's a man and a, and a, a wife here that's giving the get. And then later on, they come back later and, and now Bezna asks, did you see that this man gave the get to his wife here? Yeah, they, they, they saw Yosef Meshim. They don't recognize necessarily who this person is. So therefore, there still could be a concern because the Edom are not necessarily paying attention to recognize this person. The next day, someone else comes. He also has a black beard. He also has glasses and he also has a hat. And it, will, it could be a problem. That's why the Gemara is asking here, what do you do in a city like this? So Rav Achabahuna answers, This is what Rav said regarding such a case. If you have two people with the same name that are living in the same city, They could only divorce their wives. You have to bring the other couple with the same names like them. It has to be done one in front of the other. So then in such a case, there's no concern. Obviously, one couple is not going to allow one person, a man, to go and give a get to the other person's wife that she should claim that she's divorced. But there's still a problem if this person would go now to a different city. Why wouldn't we be concerned as follows? Maybe a person can go to a different city where people don't know who he is. He doesn't even have necessarily this name. And he goes and makes up a name. And then he calls himself by the name Yosef ben Shimon. And it's a new city. People don't know who he is. So he says, this is my name, Yosef ben Shimon, the Kos of Gita. And then he comes to the Bezdin and says, I need a get written for my wife. And my name is Yosef ben Shimon. And my wife's name is Rivka. And then he goes back to the city where he came from. And he brings a get to another woman that's married to another person by the same name of Yosef ben Shimon. Why wouldn't we be concerned that a person could do such a thing? He just uh, assume, uh, uh, take, upon a, uh, take a name in a different city. Nobody's going to know the difference. Why would he do that? Huh? Why would he do that? He's, again, he's trying to help this woman. Maybe why he just, this woman is trying to get a get from this man. So he's going to go and write this get and, and give it to this woman. 
Amalu Rav Hone Bachinene Hachi Yama Rav. No, the reason why we're not concerned for this is because Rav said, Once a person is living in a city and he's been called with a specific name for 30 days, we're not concerned here because a person going around with a fictitious name for 30 days, it would be discovered because after over this time, someone would figure out who this person really is. So what's if it's a case where this person is not here for 30 days yet? So then what's the story? Would, would this person be able to write uh, a get using this name even before 30 days? So Abaye says, In such a case, if you have uh, this new person in the city that's presenting himself with a certain name, you want to be sure that this is actually his name. So call him and see if he responds immediately to you. Like uh, suddenly call his name. And what happens if he responds immediately, instinctively, so you know that this is actually his name. So then you can give him the get with this name even before 30 days. But Rav Zvid, Rav Zvid says, no, that's actually not going to be enough. Rav Mo, a thief, a person that is doing this trick here, but Rav Mo says, oh, he's, he's very conscious of this, and therefore he's going to be aware if someone calls him his name, his fictitious name, he's going to immediately respond. So that's not a good way how to uh, see if this is his real name, and therefore you are going to have to wait 30 days to be sure that this is his real name.